Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Well, what an interesting evening of boxing we've all just had. Very, 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 very interesting. Uh, obviously the evening started with the Josh Waddington show. And it finished with the Tyson Fury uh, Masterclass. I say Masterclass with a heavy heart because Tyson can only beat who's in front of him, can't he really? And a lot of emphasis were made on he's fighting a big guy, six foot five, uh, 18 and a half stone and uh, you know all that carry on number two with WBO fair enough undefeated guy 24 and out Tyson dispatched him and he put on a good show in his American shorts and uh, his white gloves so good luck to Tyson but does it count as a lineal defence no it doesn't but he can only beat us in front of him and who knows, maybe I've been a bit harsh on Tyson lately. Uh, maybe he took the wilder fight too early. Maybe we talked into that fight because he didn't look good against Pianetta. I don't know, but he looked good yesterday, didn't he? He looked very uh, lethal, to be honest. And maybe that extra weight he's got on, got on himself with about 19 stone, wasn't he? Maybe that's... That's uh, going to be Tyson's new weight. Uh, I don't believe it, it's a two horse race. I believe it's still a four horse race. You've got Wilder, Fury, Andy Ruiz and Joshua. They're all in the mix them four. Andy Ruiz has got all the belts. He's got four of the five belts hasn't he? But, getting back to the Josh Warrington show, uh, I thought the fight was a stinker, but we'll start at the beginning really. You know, Jack McGann beat Kevin McCauley, he's been a journeyman years, Kevin McCauley. John Joyce beat Victor Idaga. Uh, like Kevin McCauley and Victory Dagger, both were losing records. Cody Davis, another undefeated guy, beat Harry Matthews with a losing record. Shaquille Thompson, another undefeated guy, beat Alistair Warren. So the first four on the night are all undefeated, and the fighting guys were losing records. That's how boxing is. That's just how they're matched up. I'm just telling you as it is. Uh, Mark Efron, everybody knows I'm a massive Mark Efron fan. He slipped down the pecking order, and he over, over the last 12 months. But he beat uh, Daniel Abansky, who, who himself had a losing record. Uh, I'm surprised it went to points for uh, for Mark Efron. I'm really, really surprised. Uh, I thought he would have took him out. Um, disappointed with his performance but it's only his second fight back since losing to uh, Liam Williams Jack Bateson 9-0 undefeated Leeds kid beat Bayardo Ramos he's got a losing record as well Alex Dickinson 10-0 he lost to Camille Sokolowski, who's got a losing record, so that was a shock. Alex Dickinson losing was a massive, massive shock. Uh, real, real big shock. But Alex didn't turn pro while he was about 30 years old, though, did he really? So I think that's probably Alex going to be, he'll probably turn into a journeyman now. I don't mean, I don't mean that to sound harsh, but. It, uh, 
I know he does a few tickets and that and he's a scouser but I think that where does he go from here now losing against Camille Sokolowski who's got a losing record and you know he'd lost four of his last six I don't know where where he goes from there now Alex Dickinson I don't know but I wish him well Troy Williamson another undefeated own fighter fighting against Edwin Palacio and he's got a winning record 12 and 8 with a draw good win for Troy Lyndon Arthur I'm a big fan of he beat Andre Saldra he were 15 and 6 and 1 Lyndon goes to 15 and 0 and he's one for the future and uh, I'd like to see uh, I'd like to see Lyndon now uh, fight for a title now I think he's ready I'd like to see him probably fight Liam Conroy and then maybe Craig Richards but I'd like to see I'd like to see him uh, in with those sort of guys but I rate Lyndon Arthur I really rate him and uh, he's from Moston big punching Manchester kid uh, 12 knockouts he's got sorry 13 knockouts sorry 12 knockouts sorry Lyndon's got out of 15 so he sent, he sent 12 for an early bath out of 15 and uh, I rate him and I want to see him fight Liam Conroy two seconds just got Uh, get after Lyndon Arthur. We had James Metcalf. I had him to beat Wellburn. 19 and 0. James Metcalf. Jason Wellburn obviously fought for a world title, didn't he? Against Hurd. And I think he's spent now, Jason Wellburn. Uh, I think he's spent. He's just, I mean, Jason Wellburn's just been in with Langford twice, Hurd and Metcalf. So he's very, very brave. Maybe too brave, but he don't punch hard enough for my liking to keep taking fights like that. I had Leon Woodstock to beat Zelfa Barrett. Uh, I just fancied Leon Woodstock. I don't know why. I just fancied him. I just something in me told me to beat Zelfa Barrett, but Zelfa Barrett turned it on in style. I mean, he looked really good on the night. Really flashy skills. I thought he'd tire towards it, but he didn't. We were fighting a pressure fighter. He looked good. And uh, he'll go on to he'll go on and do good things now. Uh, Zelf for Barrett, he will go on and good things and do good things. What next for Zelfa remains to be seen. But I'd like to see him fight Liam Welsh. I think that's a good fight. They're both 22 and one. Obviously, zelfa has got eight years on him. I just think that's a good fight for him. I think he's got to step up now. Uh, he's got to step up, but uh, but yeah, I think that's uh, a good win. For, a good win for him. Uh, very very good win. I'd also like to see. Uh, I'd like to see him rematch Ronnie Clark. That's who I'd like to see. I'd like to see him rematch Ronnie Clark because since Ronnie Clark beat him, he, he, he's, he's, he's been missing. He's been missing for 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 16 months. So he beat Selfa Barrett. Right, I know it was a mandatory decision, but he beat him for vacant IBF Super Featherweight title. Since then, he's been parked up. So I think that's crazy. But. Uh, that brings me to, but that's boxing, but that brings me to the Josh Warrington fight. <laughs> There's something that leaves a bad taste in my mouth about this fight. I'm not a big kid Galahad, Galahad fan because of how he conducts himself. Um, I don't like drug cheats and 
that gym's got a bad reputation for it. Uh, maybe it's just unlucky. I don't know, but something about Kid Galahad that I don't like. But fair's fair. He's very, very, very technical. He's not there to be hit, and he's not really in good fights. He usually stinks the place out, doesn't he? But I think he's been served a disjustice. He's been he's had a disjustice on this on this fight on this promotion. I mean, you've got BT Sport, big dogs. You know, Frank Warren, John Rawling, all them lot, they're all talking about Kid Galahad being a drug cheat. Fair enough. He's done his time, move on. But they don't mention one little thing about Tyson Fury being a drug cheat, do they? And he's on a BT show. Why is that? Why is that? Hey, I don't, I don't, I just don't get that. What's good for Goose is good for Gander. Yeah, Tyson's done his ban as well. He's done his ban, but Galahad's done his ban as well. But we don't, they don't mention that about Tyson Fury, do they? So I thought Kid Galahad had a disservice done to him by, by the Frank Warren lot. Fair's fair, but you know I'm a Josh Warrington fan. I said he'd win on points, and he did. I like Josh Warrington. Uh, I don't know Josh Warrington though. I don't know him, but I like him. I know Nick Manners very well. He's corner man, cut man. So for that reason, I wanted Nick to do well and prosper. Now, Nick Manners, you might remember, fought Joe Calzaghe. But uh, I just feel that they didn't give Galahad enough credit. He's a 26 and 0 mandatory challenger. He has earned the right to be there on the night. So what 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 was the narrative from BT Sport to hammer him and get under his skin because he fought all right, didn't he? But in my opinion, and I know a lot of people don't agree, you have to rip that belt off the champion. Timothy Bradley fought Junior Witter, and he's a similar style to Galahad. But Timothy Bradley dropped him that night in Nottingham. I was there ringside. Now. That's how you hit the belt from the champion. Yeah, you went 12 rounds, but you actually dropped him. Galahad didn't drop him, and he was holding all night. A bit like Andre Dirrell against Carl Froch. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Warrington was chasing the fight, and he had the quick, better work rate. Yeah, Galahad were pot shotting and that, but he weren't doing enough, and it was a stinker of a fight, and very, very hard to score. And when fights are hard to score, you tend to score it with the guy that you want to win. So, I could see Warrington having it bare three rounds. I could also see it being a draw, but I couldn't see a win for Galahad. So, Howard Foster, I think he slipped into matchroom FC mode on the night. <laughs> That's what I think. I think he slipped into the matchroom FC mode on the night. And uh, it is what it is, but Josh Warrington onwards and upwards, 29 and 0. Uh, where he goes from here is probably America. I don't think he fights Frampton next, I don't know, but Frank's going to want to keep that belt, isn't he? Now, Josh Warrington is. He's had two defences now of his belt so he's going to be looking for his third defence he's had a Leeds fight, a Manchester fight and a Leeds fight now he's basically a Leeds fighter isn't he really he, uh, he's always going to fight in West Yorkshire one, two, three, four five, six 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. He's had 16 fights in Leeds, Josh Warrington, out of 29. So he's a ticket seller, isn't he? Steve Wood's not going to want to give that up. No. I want to see Josh Warrington now. I want to see him fight. 
your Leo Santa Cruz, your Gary Russell, your Oscar Valdez. I want to see, in fact, them guys. That's what I want to see. Oscar Valdez is 26 and 0. You know, he's. Uh, He's already had six defences of his belt. So Oscar Valdez, you could say, really, technically, is the man. Leo Santa Cruz, could you say he's the man? Uh, maybe. He's a world title champion, isn't he? Just like uh, Josh, he's probably more experienced than Josh, Gary Russell Jr, uh, I think uh, is a world class fighter, Lomachenko is an elite fighter and he fought him in his third fight didn't he so I don't know what he did to him but as far as I'm concerned those guys have to fight each other, Frank Warren's got to make it happen uh, Cruz, Gary Russell Jr, Valdez, Warrington, Frampton, Kid Galahad, you know, them guys, uh, he can come again, Galahad. Uh, Kan Zhu, the, uh, the China man. You'd have to say he's, uh, in the mix as well wouldn't you so it is what it is isn't it you've got them seven guys you could throw in quig you could throw in quig again couldn't you uh, and uh, you've got eight guys there they could have a round robin couldn't they but getting back to uh, getting back to <clears throat> to Josh Warrington, that's what I'd like to see from him, but the fight itself, what a stinker, and what annoyed me more than anything else was the fact that Ronald McDonald, aka Ronald McIntosh, fucking Skeletor, he ruined the night, I mean, some of the things he comes out with He's unbelievable. He can say he can say things like uh, Josh Warrington, and he fought uh, Tom Stalker in the ABAs, and Tom Stalker went on to captain the Olympic team, but he came on without a belt in a robbery, and blah de blah. And Tom Stalker's mum's favourite foods, beef burgers, and she puts ketchup on them, and has battered onion rings, and their next door neighbours dogs, cats, uncles, goldfish. He's just died. He goes on and fucking on. He does me head in. So, as far as I'm concerned, Ronald McDonald shouldn't be near a fucking microphone ever again. He makes Adam Smith look like Lomachenko. God, he, I'll tell you what, I'll end up with an also listening to Ronald McDonald. So, from now on, I'm urging all hardcore boxing fans to just turn the fucking sound down when he's on. Well, I'll tell you this much, right? I thought he would have been commentating... Fury fight, but he didn't. But as far as I'm concerned, right, obviously because he's in a different country, but he is a mess. Ronald McDonald is a mess. He shouldn't be near a fucking. He shouldn't be near a fucking co a microphone. The guy's a fucking complete helmet. So get your votes sent in for this month. Jesus, unbelievable. But it is what it is, isn't it? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give my opinion on Tyson Fury, then I'm going to get Stig to have his moment of fucking glory, he's already just rung me, he's chomping at the bit Stig to uh, empty a load isn't he, <laughs> so but it is what it is isn't it, now, so what I'm going to do now, we'll finish off this here now and then we'll do the Fury uh, video. If, and then I'll ring Stig and we'll have him on, yeah? Alright, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Shout out to Castle Winders of Doncaster. Alright? Thank you very much for backing the channel.